excuse me for a second. This has been a long time coming. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the city of Laramie. Uh, they accepted our donation, and um, it's just really, it's really in a perfect place as far as I'm concerned. This is a great environment. This park is the premier park, I think, in this city, which a lot of um, youth will come, read, the, read what this memorial is about, and um, it'll just be th seen by thousands of people every year. A lot of people don't know about Kenny Sailors and the famous jump shot, and now they will, along with Rudy's contribution. I really want to thank GE Johnson, US Engineering, and Domino Construction. I made one phone call to Bailey Miller and she says, I got this. She says, these guys have done a lot for the university and they want to do a lot for our community and they'll get involved. And I got to tell you what, they never batted an eye. I mean, it, it's actually fun to see how giddy they are when we started to put this statue up. You guys are lifesavers for me and for Rudy. And thank you doesn't say enough to you guys for what you've done for us here in Washington Park. As you may know, sometime in the 1920s, a, bro a boy grew up in Hillsdale, Wyoming, went to school there in Hillsdale and played basketball. Ironically, he would practice on the farm with his brother. But there was a small problem. Kenny was just a five foot 10, towering five foot 10 but a bit smaller than his brother at six foot five, and all the time he would try to shoot, his brother would block his shots. Kenny told us, it was hard to win with my brother around. He always stuffed the ball right to the ground. But Kenny was a thinker. And as a rancher and a true cowboy, he says, you just have to learn how to fix things. So I guess I decided if I jumped up and threw the ball, and golly, I could jump really high, I would surprise my brother and get a shot off. Well, guess what? It worked. And his brother Bud said, I think you got something there, Kenny. And that's how Kenny became the inventor of the jump shot. This marvel helped the University of Wyoming not only to the NIT championship, but the NCAA, and eventually a World Amateur <clears throat> Basketball Championship in 1943. We beat them all, he told us. Kenny told me in his career that he played 99 collegiate basketball games and 66 of those basketball games were on the road. He said it was tough to get to Laramie, so we just had to go to them. He said we beat them all, no matter where we played. My favorite story that Kenny shared with me and my uncle when we were visiting him in 2015 at the Hall of Fame, he told us a story that when they went to Madison Square Garden, and he says, do you know that movie, Hoosiers, where the producer portrayed the legendary coach, Norman Dale, taking a tape measure and measuring the court and tell, telling the players in 1954, see this, it's the same court, the same height basket, the same foul line 15 feet away. Kenny told us, realistically, F. Shelton did that in 1943 in Madison Square Garden when we went there. And Norman must have just copied him. I think that's 1954 version of fake news, don't you? Rudy and I spent many hours with Kenny over the last few years of his life. Uh, we showed Kenny the sculpture, talked about basketball, talked about hand position. Uh, we talked about his revolution of the game and how great it, and he told us how great it was to teach Eskimo girls the game of basketball in Alaska. But my fondest memory is of Kenny and Rudy shaking hands. Kenny thanking Rudy for his work and letting us create this statue. Kenny told us, I think there's better players from the University of Wyoming than me. What about Fennis? What about Flynn? Our response was this, you're a legend, Kenny. NCAA tournament most valuable player in 1943, the only three-time All-American from the University of Wyoming, and the man who invented the jump shot just to beat his brother in the game of basketball. You are a Wyoming legend and basketball legend. We told Kenny, those guys are just trying to follow in your shoes. Those days 
with Kenny and Rudy will be in my memory for the rest of my life. But the true story for me today is not Kenny Sailors. Not for me, not today. Today is to honor a man who has dedicated his career to the youth of Wyoming. Rudy Gunter, as some may know, has ALS. And during this venture, we knew that time could be a factor to get this statue done. Rudy and his family, God bless them. They dug in and made this happen. Even one of Rudy's sons, Blake, took the roof off of his garage so Rudy could put the sculpture together when he was feeling good. Or Spence, oh, Spence, that's right. Uh, thank you, Spence. But Blake, you can take credit too if you want. Who will tell? I offered my shot, but it was easier for Rudy to walk in a block or two over to his son's house and do the work when he could. And as you may know, we've had a lot of dilemmas. Some you don't know about the statue falling when we transported it, and Mary and Rudy had to go to Lander and put it back together and make it work. There was also this little heater problem that got a little hot in the, uh, in the garage and things started to melt a little bit and thank God for an air conditioner, right guys? And I know that there were times that Rudy didn't want to get out of bed, but this statue meant the, meant the world to Rudy. So day after day, he would go to the garage and work. And towards the end, he received a lot of help from Mary Shaw. And I got to tell you, Rudy told me, Mary, that you're a lifesaver. And I agree, and I can't thank you enough for what you've done. But I want to reflect about my relationship with Rudy. I really had no idea who Rudy Gunter was, except when I was in high school, he was a great basketball coach from our rival, Green River. Yeah, that's right, Green River Wolves. They're green and white, just like CSU. Kind of hard to like. <laughs> he won several conference championships and produced some amazing talent that went on to play in college and professionally. Larry Shia told me, and Rudy once, I was working for Jerry Pym at Utah as a GA. Pim asked me to Sweetwater County to look at three players, Gerald Matson, Bruce Collins, and some guy named Smith from Green River. He said he went back to Jerry and says, ah, nah, don't worry about them, they're nothing. They're, they're nothing, don't, they're what we want. But I did remember that he told me that he remembered Rudy and how well coached his team was. Oh, by the way, I think Pim wanted to fire him after that, after all three of these turned out to be five-star recruits. We'll have to ask Jeremy later if his dad ever told him that story. Rudy quit coaching in 19, I think the late 1970s, so he could watch his boys wrestle. Can't play coach basketball and watch my boys wrestle at the same time. Because his family means more to him. And I know that they appreciated that. And those are memories that you and your family could never get back. But I want to tell you that Rudy has never limited himself to being an artist or just a basketball coach. Rudy is the founder of the annual Art on the Green in Green River, Wyoming, where artists get 20 pounds of clay in 24 hours to produce a 16-inch sculpture. And then they get judged. And that's pretty awesome if you've ever been there. He's also instrumental in the Rudy Gunter Classic, a Wyoming Amateur Wrestling Association tournament held in Green River. And I'm not too sure how long these have been going on, but I think for over 10 years. And of course, he's instrumental in the Wyoming Senior Olympics Games. Rudy, you're really a gifted and remarkable man, and thank you for what you've done for our state. But in, but in conclusion, before I ask Rudy and his wife Sandy and maybe his family and Mary to come up and unveil this amazing work of art, I want to reflect my relationship with Rudy and tell you how appreciative I am for his work and for his friendship. Rudy and I, over the past five years or so, have become friends and his wit and his love for his family, the youth of Wyoming, Kenny, and the Cowboys go deep. I admire him for that. And as a graduate of the University of Wyoming, I know his blood too runs brown and gold. And as for his friend Kenny, well, they competed against each other, but they also helped start the Senior Olympics here in Wyoming together. Not just as competitors, but friends, and doing for others, and thinking about them, not themselves. When it comes to passion for the youth and family of this great state, there are very little differences between Kenny and Rudy. Rudy loves sacrificing and giving to others, sharing experiences, 
and making memories with everyone who surrounds you. I applaud and I admire you, Rudy, for sticking this out and letting me tell the story. Kenny's story is a great story and his jump shot is legendary. But Rudy, this statue is about your love for art, your desire for people to learn and to reflect and how you have showed me and this state your persistence to overcome every obstacle that's thrown around in front of you. Thank you again, Rudy, for your friendship. Thank you for this magnificent piece of art. I'm sure the city of Laramie will appreciate it, and they appreciate your talent and your gift. The youth will learn more about you and about Kenny because of this statue. I love you, I cherish your friendship, and thank you again. I think you can just grab it.